أعزائي الطلاب المرحلة الرابعة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Today we will talk about drugs that are used for obesity management. But before starting with these drugs, it is important to define obesity. So obesity is given to individuals with BMI of 30 or greater than 30. Of course, there is overweight, but here we will talk mostly about uh, obese patients. Uh, obesity, uh, it was believed for, believed for a long time. That happens due to imbalance between how much energy inputs and how much energy outputs. But now it is believed there are other factors or other risk factors such as genetics, metabolism, behavior, culture, and socioeconomic status also could affect on getting uh, obesity. Uh, the most commonly used class uh, for obesity management is serotonin uh, agonist. And this may be the only class that can be used for a chronic weight uh, management. And uh, it works through uh, appetite suppression. In general, with serotonin agonists or with other um, drugs that are used for obesity, it is important for patients uh, to lose around 5% of their body weight from using drugs for obesity. Otherwise, it is highly recommended for, uh, uh, to stop using these drugs because there is no um, uh, achievable benefits. Uh, the majority, as we said, uh, the we, as we will see in a minute, the majority of these drugs should be used for short term, not for long term controlling of obesity. So this table uh, just shows the drugs that are now used for obesity. Of course, you don't have to remember everything in this table. We will talk about most of these drugs uh, in this lecture. So the first class here, we have serotonin agonist. And here we have a story. First, there were two drugs that have been uh, developed in this class, enfiloramine and dexfenfiloramine. And this drug, uh, these drugs were very effective in controlling obesity, but unfortunately, uh, they are causing serious side effects, what it is called valvulopathy, or the, or the disorder of the blood, uh, blood vessels valves. And this led to discontinuation of using these drugs. And this happens due to, uh, because these drugs are not only affecting CNS, but also they are affecting valves in the blood vessels because they are targeting a certain subclass of serotonin receptors, what it is called serotonin receptor 2P. And uh, valvulopathy uh, leads to uh, serious uh, disease, uh, pulmonary hypertension, or there is an increase in the incidence of uh, increasing blood pressure in the pulmonary uh, arteries. After that, uh, there, there is a third drug has been developed. Uh, then after that, there is a third drug has been developed, and this one is lorcaserin, and this one is more selective for another subclass of serotonin receptor, 2C. Uh, and accordingly, this one, this receptor is mostly found in the CNS. So accordingly, there is a significant decrease in the incidence of valvulopathy and an increase of using this drug for weight management and even for chronic weight management. So let's take a look here on the mechanism of action of this drug. So uh, as we said, this drug is an agonist for 2C and 2C uh, activation, this receptor, uh, this receptor uh, causes an increase in the level of uh, POMC, pro-opio pro melanocortin. And this one causes activation of melanocortin receptor, and this one causes decrease in the appetite. So uh, as a natural result, uh, lorcaserin causes a decrease in the appetite. But as we said in the, uh, in the first slide, sorry, in the first slide, if there is no decrease in around 5% of the body weight, so it is highly recommended uh, to stop using this drug. The pharmacokinetics, uh, lorcaserin uh, is, is metabolized in the liver and it is converted into, to, uh, into Inactive metabolites and these metabolites are excreted in the urine. 
there are no enough data or results about the safety of this drug in the presence of liver disease. So it is recommended not to use this drug if the patient uh, has liver disease. Side effects. The most commonly happens uh, side effects with this drug, uh, let's say, can be classified as gastrointestinal side effects, such as uh, nausea, dry mouth, constipation. Uh, of course, there are other side effects, such as lethargy and uh, headache. However, there are more serious side effects, such as mood changes, which could lead to suicidal ideation. The other serious side effects is what it is called life-threatening serotonin syndrome or neuroleptic malignant syndrome. I think uh, you took these two terms uh, with the drugs that are used for CNS. So uh, uh, the patient should be uh, under careful monitoring in order to identify any of these conditions if happens. So uh, at, at that time, it is uh, necessary to, uh, to stop using this drug because these serious side effects, these are life-threatening side effects. In addition to this, because of the risk of serotonin syndrome, there are other drugs could increase the incidence of this syndrome, such as the uh, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor or serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, mouse, and serotonergic drugs. All these classes of drugs should be, avoiding, uh, should be avoided during the use of Thorca cell. We said in the beginning that this drug is safer than the other two previous drugs, fenfiloramine and fenfiloramine, uh, regarding valvulopathy. However, there is, still there is an incidence of valvulopathy, even with lower calcium. So, um, so uh, still there is a need to monitor this drug, especially in patients with uh, high risk, such as patients with a history of heart failure or other cardiovascular uh, diseases. The second class here in the uh, appetite suppressants, uh, we have the fentoramine and diethylpropione. These two drugs exert their uh, pharmacological actions through increasing the release of norepinephrine and dopamine, and at the same time, they are inhibitors from uh, to a reuptake of these two neurotransmitters. Uh, so they are, in, as a net result, they are increasing the level of neurotransmitters in the brain. And increasing the level of these two, uh, two neurotransmitters um, cause activation of signals, what it is called fight to fight. So uh, when the body is like, uh, becomes ready for fighting or running or something like that, of course, there is a decrease uh, for uh, decrease for appetite. So uh, they are working through activation this signals through increasing the uh, certain neurotransmitters, norepinephrine and uh, dopamine. However, there is a, a phenomenon that happens with these two drugs, what it is called tolerance to the weight loss. So after using these drugs, like in around few weeks, there is a decrease in the effects of these drugs or their effects becomes plateaus. So they are, not, they are not causing more weight reductions. When this happens, it is, uh, it is necessary to stop using these drugs or discontinuation using uh, uh, these drugs because uh, uh, at this time there is no uh, clinical benefits from using these drugs and at the same time there is an increase in the incidence of side uh, effects. In addition to that, uh, these two drugs are also classified as controlled uh, substance. And what this means, uh, they are, there is like um, uh, there is a potential for dependence for dependence or abuse of using these two uh, drugs. So these are two factors could affecting on using these two drugs. Unlike serotonin, in this uh, aspect uh, is considered uh, is considered safer than these two uh, drugs. With the side effects also, uh, let's say the gastrointestinal side effects such as uh, a dry mouth, constipation, in addition to headache, and insomnia could happen with these two drugs. Uh, due to increasing the level of norepinephrine and dopamine, it is important to monitor blood pressure because maybe there is an increase in the uh, blood pressure. 
uh, and it is important to avoid using these drugs in, uh, in patients with history of cardiovascular diseases, uh, arrhythmias, heart failure, and um, uh, cetera. The other thing, uh, which it, uh, uh, and it is similar to lorcalcerin and serotonin agonist, like maybe there is an increase in the incidence of side effects if there is a concomitant use with the uh, MAO inhibitors, monoamino oxidase inhibitors. Then we have uh, a different uh, drug here, or a different, a different uh, lipase inhibitor. And here we have only until now uh, one drug in this class, Orlistat. And Orlistat is uh, a lipase inhibitor. Lipase is an enzyme in the gastrointestinal, dra uh, gastrointestinal tract, uh, causes breakdown of uh, fats and lipid in the food and converting them into smaller molecules, and these molecules uh, are absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract. So administration, this drug inhibits this process and causing uh, excretion of these fats and uh, lipids uh, with the stool. But patients are losing their uh, weight due to the loss of calories. So there are not enough calories are entering to the body from the food, so and the still the body uh, uses a lot of calories, and this causes with the time uh, loss of weight. Uh, it is very beneficial and safe drug, but this drug could cause, uh, let's say, uh, certain side effects. They are not serious, but they are causing uh, poor patient adherence. So poor tolerability for this drug, such as uh, uh, oil spotting, flatulence discharge, fecal urgency, and increased defecation. Of course, there are certain strategies for to decrease or minimize these side effects, such as low-fat diet or concomitant use cholesterol. But still, the, these side effects are common side effects. The other thing is only side is contraindicated in in a pregnancy and also in uh, patients with chronic malabsorption syndrome or cholestasis. This drug could interfere with the absorption of uh, many supplements such as uh, fast soluble vitamins, uh, uh, beta carotene, but uh, also it, affecting, uh, it affects on other uh, kinds of medications as we will see here with amiodarone, cyclosporin, etc. Uh, and here, this is drug, these are should be used as supplements. So it is important to use supplements with using this drug in order to prevent any loss or uh, malabsorption syndrome. So it is important with all these, like either food or a drug or other supplements. It is important to put like a time window. Uh, this is like for with the other drugs. Uh, let's say here with the levothyro levothyroxine. So if the patients uh, have. Uh, disorder in the goiter gland. So it is important to put a time window like around five hours in order to prevent interaction between all the start and the thyroxine. And this uh, table here shows the, if, uh, the efficacy of the uh, all start and it is very efficacious. So drug like in around 100 weeks uh, causes uh, a very significant decrease in the weight in comparison with the placebo. Then we have a glucagon-like peptide. Uh, we would not talk about this drug um, too much today because I think we took this drug with the drugs for diabetes. But I will mention some things at the end of the lecture about this drug. Then after that, we have combinational therapy. And here we are using more than one drug to control obesity. And the first example with this is, the, is fentolamine. And this we, we, we talked about this drug and this caused an increase in the release of neurotransmitter in the brain. And also we have a topiramate. So a, combina a combination of fen uh, fentolamine and topiramate. And topiramate is anticonvulsant uh, anti uh, drugs. So a drug is used for uh, epilepsy. So this one is, uh, the, uh, this is like the cause decreases in the way they, they notice that using topiramate in epileptic patients causes a decrease in the body weight. 
but uh, it is combined with the uh, fentanyl for two reasons to increase the efficacy of this drug and also to um, decrease the sedation that could happen with the uh, topiramid. Uh, of course, uh, as we said in the beginning, if there is no around 5%. Losing of the weight in around 12 weeks, so it is important to discontinue using these drugs. Of course, this combination with a serious side effect. Another thing about discontinuation, this medication it should be discontinued gradually. Otherwise, there is a, a, a risk of a epileptic attack or seizure could happen in the patient. Uh, the other thing with the topiramid, this drug causes defects in the birth and uh, other side effects. So, uh, it is uh, the combination of fentanyl and topiramid is contraindicated in pregnancy. And then we have another or second example of uh, combinational therapy, uh, bupropion and naltrexone. And these drugs are, we will talk about them in the last table. So from this table, just I want you uh, uh, to, let's say, focus all this information we mentioned, um, sorry, we mentioned uh, all these information in the lecture, so it is up to you either to memorize them from this table or by reading the lecture. But here it is important to memorize these two drugs like uh, uh, bupropion with the nalitroxone and glutide. So these two drugs, uh, uh, with this one like uh, bup uh, bupropion, this one causes an increase in the POMC, and we'll talk this for opium melanocortin, while you know, uh, naltrexone blocks the auto inhibitory feedback of the hypothalamic melanocortin system. So it is, uh, they are working like in a similar way to uh, serotonin agonists. Uh, they are regulating the uh, mesolimbic reward system and result in appetite suppression. Uh, pharmacokinetic is not uh, very important, but here we have like certain side effects. Mostly they are gastrointestinal side effects. With the liraglutide and this one, as we said, like a glucagon, uh, glucagon uh, receptors, uh, agonists for uh, uh, glucagon-like uh, receptor agonists. Also, they are, uh, they are working through slowing the gastric empty time and, uh, and increase the uh, satiety. Uh, this drug could cause uh, certain side effects, and mostly it is uh, these side effects are gastrointestinal side effects. So here, this is the end of the lecture. Of course, if you have uh, any questions or concerns, just let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you very much.